DC uh, represent more than 5,000 firms with more than 500,000 employees. Um, Mr. Jeff Beard is the Vice President and Director uh, for the ACEC Institute for Business Management. Uh, here to talk to you about ACEC, Mr. Beard. Thank you. I have a confession to make. I come from a family of engineers. Uh, my father worked as a civilian engineer for the Navy 32 years, put three children through college. Um, and he always said uh, when the engineers from the Navy, he was at Pax River, and they would all disappear in the 60s and 70s and go to work for Boeing and Lockheed, 50% increase in pay. They would all go, and you know, the capitalistic economy has its ups and downs. A couple of years later, they would come crawling back, wanting their government jobs back. So slow and steady wins the race. My older brother, uh, University of Virginia graduate, aerospace engineering, landed an interesting government job. He works for a little agency called DIA. So every two years, is Vince Valdez in the room here? Uh, every two years, they would send him to the Paris Air Show to check out those helicopters that the Chinese and the Russians were building. And then he would come back and debrief the people at DOD on what those helicopters, uh, what our friends and sometimes adversaries were doing in the helicopter business. So, uh, interesting work. U.S. government uh, is an employer of choice, I can tell you. Now, three different ways you can go in your career. Those of you who are in engineering or thinking about going into an engineering career, three types of employers. There's the private sector, lots of wonderful and interesting jobs. U.S. government. There's a third sector, though, uh, that we generally call the nonprofit. Uh, social corporations or NGOs, the non-governmental organizations, also another area where there's a lot of employment for engineers in the country. I just want to talk about two things today. There's a lot of things that the American Council of Engineering Companies does, a lot of programs we're involved in, uh, and uh, I can't, don't have time for all of those, so I wanted to talk a little, little bit, a bit about engineering business management and also engineering and sustainability, which are two programs we're working on. So a couple of items from our industry trend survey. We do this survey with Zweig White, a company that's a consultant to the industry. They do national surveys of engineering firms and engineers each year. So I wanted to show you uh, some employment growth that came out of, uh, well, actually, this is a Department of Labor uh, statistic and shows growth in various disciplines. Now, all of you know how many engineering disciplines there are for which you can gain a degree in the United States, don't you? This is another DOL statistic. How many different disciplines do you think there are? Oh, I'll answer for you. I don't see any hands rushing up because Greg already talked about lunch. There are 26 engineering disciplines in the United States, 26. An individual technical discipline, I happen to be an ASCE member, John Esslinger follows me, I think, uh, to talk this morning. But that's just, there are 25 other disciplines, mechanical, electrical, geotechnical, of course, and some emerging new ones, like biomedical and others. So a lot of engineering opportunities. This is from our survey for companies working in the built and natural environment, uh, what starting salaries would be. This is just with a BSc in engineering. One of my daughters, uh, just got her MPH, Master of Public Health. She's up working at Johns Hopkins. And uh, you see the civil engineering salary there? She's only earning 78% as her first job up there. So, you know, you can do better just with a bachelor's in engineering if you want to look at uh, starting salaries. Oh, a couple of uh, things. Uh, if you go into the technical realm and you're doing uh, you know, destructive testing like you saw earlier, you're designing new things, you're building great uh, uh, engineering works, a lot of things you can do on the technical side. But if you're on the business side, whether you're in government or industry, a couple of things you'll be interested in, in knowing is uh, uh, what your overhead rate is. How do we pay the rent? How do we pay the managerial staff? How do we pay the human resources person and the, and the finance people? Well, you have to have an overhead rate that you apply. So that gives some of those. And in our business, that is in the business of the built and natural environment and building infrastructure primarily and buildings and other things, 
you have a particular salary amount, okay? And then you have a multiplier rate that that's what you have to charge the customer because of things like overhead and paying the rent, you know, buying the gasoline for your car and that sort of thing. So you can see, let's say you're earning $50 an hour, uh, the, the cost would, you would have to charge $150 to your customer to be able to afford to keep your, the, the, the doors open to your business. Uh, backlog, uh, with our recession of the last two years, the number of months of work that you would have has been f uh, falling. Finally, as of January, it's starting to experience a leveling and work uh, backlogs no longer shrinking and it's starting to go back up. So that's good news for those of you who are going to graduate uh, and go off into the workforce this year. A few of the legislative issues that ACEC works with, uh, we're a 501c6, that's a type of nonprofit, and we're allowed to lobby. That's not a bad word. We're allowed to advocate for the engineering profession to try to get money for you know, anything from uh, highway programs to, uh, to uh, mass transit and all kinds of other things where engineers are employed. So those are some of the issues that we were concerned about. The second thing I wanted to talk about, a little bit about sustainability. Because I know, uh, you know, with a couple of daughters myself, young people, uh, I know you folks are really concerned about our, our earth, our ecology. Uh, we're building, because the long life of our engineering works, we're building 2050 and beyond today. The service life of one of our products and in infrastructure tends to be 25, 30 years minimum. And if it's a bridge that's well designed, it might be a couple hundred years. So we have to say, what are we doing to prepare for the future for our own children and grandchildren? Uh, here's a scary little slide. The truth of the matter is we're using more resources than, than what we have. Worldwide, we're using 1.3 Earths, and we only have one Earth. If you look at the United States, we're voracious consumers of resources and energy. We're up in the 1.8 to 2.3, depending on what scientific study you look at. So there's some real challenges there. So we formed um, ACEC along with the American Society of Civil Engineers and the American Public Works Association, a brand new nonprofit that just opened its doors. In fact, the website came up last week. I know, because I spent many long hours on it. Here's the website. It's the Institute for Sustainable Infrastructure. The website is www.sustainableinfrastructure.org. And this little organization is going to grow. It's going to be as big as the U.S. Green Building Council. We kept waiting for U.S. GBC and its lead rating system to do anything but four walls and a roof. And they did. They went a little bit into the neighborhoods. But what about all the uh, infrastructure projects? What about all the industrial projects in the United States? That also needs a rating system to say whether we're sustainable or not. And believe me, we have some things that are not currently sustainable. So I commend the, the growth of this organization to your, uh, uh, take a look at it, take a look at the site. It will have a rating tool that will be a simple checklist at its level one. At its level two, we'll have a, a composite rating system and score just like LEED. Okay, that's a level two. Level three, because the Corps of Engineers asked us for this one, they wanted to be able to look at and assess an existing base project and say, you know, are, is, this, is this really bad? Did we uh, create weapons and throw cadmium out the back door, which is highly toxic to humans and others? If so, we want to know that and have a rating that will show that. And level four will be a software-based decision support tool that, uh, that can be used to say, how can we get all the stakeholders together, the environmentalists, the local people, the engineers, the architects, uh, anyone who wants to come to the table, and how can we look at this, do the trade-offs, and come up with a more sustainable project. Now that might mean, you know, if you're looking at a particular project, this was a little controversial, because if you're in, you know, the highway business, you build highways, right? But what if a mass transit system is the better answer? This, this rating tool has a way to lead you to what might be a, a better answer. So a pathway contribution, which is not just doing the thing right, Okay, which is, but it's doing the right thing for transportation. Because what is it really about? It's about mobility, not about highways. The core rating product will be called Envision. 
and that's a trademark term, so that stacks up to lead, as I mentioned earlier. And uh, there's my contact uh, uh, email address at the bottom, and I can be reached at uh, the URL at ACEC if you uh, are interested in learning more about ACEC or ISI. Thanks for your time.